Today I'm going to make a really simple dessert which is very popular here in England. It's apple crumble with custard. I'm actually probably going to make an apple and blackberry crumble because I happen to have some blackberries in the freezer from last year. But you can really do this with any fruit you like. You could do it with mangoes, you could do it with tinned peaches if that's what you have. So there are three parts to this. There's the apple or fruit layer. There is a crumble layer which is like a pie crust but it's all broken up. And then of course there'll be the custard to pour over the top. So I've just got five dessert apples here. You can use any kind of apples. You can actually get cooking apples here in England. We have a variety called Bramley which is very popular. And some people will use cooking apples for this. They're not always available. So Granny Smith's is a good one. Any any green apples are good for this. But to be honest, any kind of apples that you have. If you use sweet dessert apples, they may need a little bit less sugar in the filling than if you use sour apples, but that's a matter of personal taste and so on. We'll come to that in a moment. You can see I'm trying to peel this with a just an ordinary knife, just to see if I could. I've actually got a potato peeler here, so I'm just going to use that instead because it's so much easier. The apples will tend to start to go brown as soon as they're peeled. And if that matters to you, you could throw a bit of lemon juice in there to stop that happening. It doesn't actually matter too much to me. And especially as we're going to be putting blackberries in this dish anyway, it really doesn't matter if my apples go a bit brown. So I'm going to cut the apples into like one centimetre dice. And I'm going to try to get rid of every little bit of peel because the peel will just go tough in the cooking. So I'm just going to throw that into a pan with a tiny bit of water in the bottom. And I'll just do the same with these other four apples. But I think also rather than waste these bits here, let's do something interesting. I'm just going to put them in a jug. Cover them with boiling water. And we'll just let those steep for a little bit, see if we can make something a bit like apple tea. This is a really good way of using up apples that are slightly past their best. So if you look at these apples here, you can see when I do that, the skin wrinkles a little bit. That won't be terribly pleasant for eating as it is, but when we're cooking it in a pie like this, it'll be just fine. These apples are a variety called Royal Gala, I think, and then they're nice sweet apples. People really like them. They're very popular. They're not very long lasting. They don't stand very long. But as I say, in a pie, it's going to be just fine. So apple tea, we'll try that actually with and without a tea bag in it. So I'll do two different versions here. Oops, probably should strain that as well. So two different versions of this apple tea. One is just literally an infusion of the apple skins. The other one I threw in a tea bag. Let's give that a try. Apple skin tea. That's really nice on its own, actually. That's actually surprisingly sweet. And with actual tea in it. Yeah, also really nice. So that's worth remembering for the leftovers. I'll just keep these by the side to sip on while I make my apple crumble. So these apples are going to go over a really low heat just to cook slightly and I'm just going to put in a couple of tablespoons of sugar. You could put more in there but these are dessert apples, they're not very sour. And also about a level teaspoonful of ground cinnamon. You could of course use other spices there, ginger's good, nutmeg is also good. Star anise goes really well with fruit, especially if you had apples and pears in there, a bit of star anise, fantastic. Just turn the heat on low and let those simmer down more or less in their own juice there's a tiny bit of water in the bottom of the pan to stop it burning while those apples are cooking and I am going to keep an eye on them 200 grams of plain flour into a large bowl and then I'm going to add to that 100 grams of butter I'll just throw it in at the moment so that's 43 83 100 exactly, how about that? No, 99, whatever. Close enough. With very clean hands, we're just gonna break that butter up into chunks in the flour here. It's been out of the fridge for a little while, so it's a little bit soft. 
If you've got cold butter, you could cut it up into chunks with a knife. So we're just going to take the butter and rub it into the flour. So all we're actually doing, let me see if I can demonstrate this. There's a chunk of butter there. We're picking up some flour with it and squeezing it together. So kind of smooshing the butter together, but with flour, keeping it from sticking to my fingers. So just using fingertips, we're just, I'm just gonna do that action. So it's just pick up chunks of butter and squish them together with the flour. This might seem messy, and there are tools you can get to do this. So you could do this in a food processor on Pulse if you want, or you could use a pastry rubber. I've got a pastry rubbing tool, which if I had clean hands, I could show you. But it's just as quick sometimes to do it by hand. Okay, and every now and again, I'm just tossing it like this, just to make sure that I haven't got any big lumps of butter forming. This works best if your hands are cold. I'm actually having a tiny bit of trouble here because the butter was quite warm and it's already going soft, but there you go. A lot of this is about being gentle and not too aggressive with your hands and just kind of breaking up rather than squashing together. Because if I compress this into a ball, it would turn into a really short dough, a bit like shortbread. And there we go. That is butter rubbed into flour. The basis really for a lot of different pastries. I'm just going to add 50 grams of sugar to that. This is a dessert dish. It has got quite a lot of sugar in it. And it's a sweet tasting dish. I'm not going to make any apologies for that. So there we go. That is the crumble topping that will go on our apple crumble. These apples are now about as cooked as I want them to be. I can just feel that they're starting to go a little bit soft. Just going to taste for sweetness at this point, because this might need a bit of additional sweetening. Actually, that's plenty sweet enough already. So the whole of that apple mixture is just going to go into an oven proof dish. And I happen to have some blueberries that I bought and froze because they were reduced. I bought them and put the whole pack in the freezer. So we'll just have a few blueberries in there. They'll cook directly from frozen because this is going to be baked in the oven. And I've also got a few frozen blackberries that I picked last year and froze. So that's it for the fruit layer. And I'll just make sure that's all kind of level and well, it's kind of randomly distributed. Now the crumble layer. I'm just going to distribute that carefully, not all in one place. So kind of put it over the top. It's quite a lot of crumble here, but I do like a thick crumble layer on my apple crumble. Now you'll notice I'm not packing this down at all. And for me, that's one of the really important things about an apple crumble is not to pack this layer down at all. We've just left it on there completely loose. And in fact, what I may do is just kind of rough up the top a little bit more because all of those little rough pits and furrows and peaks are going to brown differentially. So that's going to go into my oven, 180 degrees centigrade fan oven for probably 25 minutes, but we'll just keep an eye on it because it's done when the top looks done. So while the crumble's baking, which is that rumbling noise you can hear in the background, that's my oven, I'm just going to make the custard. I need four egg yolks for this and and I'm just going to separate those by well, the way I tend to do it is just crack the egg in half and then pass the yolk back and forth between the two halves of the shell spilling out the white a little bit at each step. People have their own techniques and some people like to use a tool for separating egg yolks. This is the method I find works best for me and I'll save those egg whites. I might make meringues or macarons or something tomorrow. And then in with these four egg yolks, I've got 60 grams of sugar. Again, quite a lot of sugar. I'm gonna have a little splash of vanilla extract in there as well. If you've got vanilla sugar, or if you like doing the whole vanilla pod scrape thing, you could certainly do that. And then I'm just gonna combine that sugar, eggs, and vanilla together. It doesn't need to be whisked until it's fluffy, it just needs to be completely broken up and combined. So I've just got 400 ml of whole milk here. I'm going to gently warm this milk through. It's not going to be boiling. It's going to be warmed up to just before the point of boiling. 
While we just wait for that milk to come up to temperature, and what about custard? Most people, I think, in Britain will make custard from custard powder if they're making it from scratch. That is assuming they're not going to buy it in a carton or tin ready-made. Custard powder is just cornstarch, yellow colouring and vanilla flavouring. Not a bad product at all. A lot of people like it. Obviously, I like it. I've got some here. But I thought today we would just make traditional egg custard, which always tastes a bit more rich and luxurious to me than cornflour custard. Right, the milk is the right temperature now, and I can test that with my finger just basically one, two, three, ouch. There we go. Can't count to three without that hurting my finger. A little bit crude, but works for me. So keeping this egg completely on the move all the time, we whisk in the milk. It's really important to get that egg combined really quickly. Just got to get that combined really quickly. Make sure there's no bits of egg stuck on the inside of the bowl there. That's good. That now goes carefully back into the pan and back on the heat. And now I won't leave this unattended for even a moment. I'm just going to keep on whisking that and heating it until it thickens. So I'm just going to keep that on the move. There's quite a lot of foam on the top there actually, so the custard underneath is actually quite a lot more yellow than that. That foam will disappear as it thickens. And it's kind of important to keep it moving at this stage or else we could end up with just basically scrambled eggs floating in milk. So this is a very gentle heat and we're just going to cook this until it thickens. I meant to say I used whole milk for this. We normally have semi-skimmed in the house, but I thought I'd buy whole milk because it just makes it that little bit more creamy. And you may actually feel it thickening before you see it thickening. It's something when you're whisking it, you can kind of feel a bit more resistance to the whisk happening as it heats. Okay, I can feel that that has actually thickened right there. So I'm going to take that right off the heat. And if we have a look, it's still quite a thin custard, I think really, but I, it will thicken a bit as it stands. So now I'm going to transfer that back into a jug. I think what I'm going to do to de-risk this custard so that I can turn my back on it without fretting. Just stand it in a bowl of very cold water there, which will sap some of the heat out of this, and bring that custard temperature down so that I don't have to keep babysitting it. I can see why people prefer the cornstarch custard. It's so much easier. We've had 25 minutes, so I'm gonna check on this crumble. Okay. Now you can see that there's fruit bubbling up around the edge there. That's to be expected. The top has gone golden brown, but I think it could probably do with about another five to 10 minutes longer. Total of 35 minutes cooking time. Let's have a look now. Yeah, I'm gonna bring that out. We can just see where the fruit has bubbled up around the edge here. And this whole thing is really, really hot. In fact, there's a bit of cracking going on here, which means that the crust has actually baked together I'm not even going to touch it, I'm just going to leave that now for probably half an hour because it really does need to cool down. If I tried to eat that now it would be scalding hot, it wouldn't be very pleasant. We're going to let it cool down so it's just warm and serve it with the custard. Well as you might have guessed this is going to be a recipe collaboration with my friend Babatunde in Nigeria. If you follow the link in the video description or on a card enabled platform in the card in the top right of the screen now, you'll get a chance to see his take on fruit crumble. He's going to take this kind of quintessentially British dish and give it a little bit of a Nigerian twist. And at the time of recording this I actually don't know what that's going to be so I'm really looking forward to seeing it. Right this crumble has cooled down sufficiently that we can now taste it. But first I just want to show you what's happened to the custard. So just as it's sat there this custard has thickened quite considerably. It's gone really silky and it's still thinner than I would expect from a cornstarch custard, but egg custard is like that. Or at least this version is anyway. Right. So the crust here is a bit like shortbread. It's got a crunch to it, even though it went in there just completely loose. Look how that's crumbling as it comes up. Oh, look at that. So that topping, let's just have a look. That topping's still, it's baked together a little bit, but it's still flaky and crumbly. I'm just gonna have a bit of custard kind of over the top and around the edge. Okay, the proof of the pudding they say is in the eating. So let's give this a try. Get a bit of everything there, a bit of fruit, a bit of crumble, and a bit of this 
nice egg custard. Here goes. And immediately made a mess everywhere. That is right. That's really, really good. I don't always use all butter in the crumble topping. I'm really glad I did here. And that's a piece of apple, but the blackberry and blueberry juices have infused into it. And the apple is just tender without completely losing some of its crispness. Really nice. That's a really good crumble, even if I say so myself. So that's my recipe for fruit crumble. Don't forget to check out Babatunde's video. I'm sure that's gonna be really interesting. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.